Stop touching me, Chris Farley. Hey everybody, welcome back to Triple F Shooting. Today we have a special revolver, the 3-inch Colt Python in 357 Magnum. I am not nearly fancy enough to have an original 3-inch, so this is a 2020 version with all the modern makings and bells and whistles. But before we get super into it, go ahead and very clear... Luckily, revolvers are super easy to do that with and see, but let's get into this piece itself. These guys came back out or were reintroduced in 2020. Some people did not like that so much. People like myself think that's awesome. I don't really want to own an original because I don't like owning things that are just going to sit in the safe that I cannot shoot or don't feel right shooting. We'll put it that way. Uh, there really aren't many gunsmiths around that are still working on original Colt Pythons. I don't believe that you can send them back to Colt currently and get them worked on. So shooting an original is just kind of a bad idea. And at the price you're paying, you know, if you find one less than 2500 bucks, you're doing pretty well, depending upon condition and everything else. So I've only held one original Colt Python for all of about 30 seconds. Oddly enough, when we picked this guy up, there was an original in the used case at our local gun store, which I had never seen one in my life. And then the day we do this, you know, go figure. But this new iteration in my, you know, limited experience so far is awesome. There's only a couple things that I would maybe change. One of them I already have, the other I'm debating on, but before we get too far, I would like to take a moment to thank the first ever, you know, video sponsor for Triple F Shooting. That would be Aura. Do you know people that probably trained and or sighted in with something like this? Maybe a little more like that? Yeah, me too. I uh, have a lot of military family members and veterans, things like that, and it kind of grossed me out to find out that they are one of the most susceptible people to identity theft, data broker sales, things like that. So, our sponsor today, Aura, can help you out with that. Recently, researchers at Duke University did a great big study where they essentially faked being an Asian domain name and email address to try to purchase U.S. military members and veterans info. Short story, they were able to do it. And they were able to do it for like 12 cents a record. Which is pretty gross, considering these people fought and or died for your freedoms. With Aura, you can protect all of the things that they were able to find in those studies. They were able to purchase military members' personal information, such as name and address, things like that financial information such as home value and bank account information, things like that, all the way down to geolocation, religious practices, medical information, you name it, they were able to buy it. That's pretty nasty. So with Aura, you can protect against all of those things. They offer not only VPN services like there are a bunch of other companies out there, but they are also kind of a one-stop shop for all this. So alongside VPN, they also have a data broker opt-out. They have a million dollars in identity theft protection. They offer parental controls, credit card information tracking, such as your scores and password usages. They've got you covered. So do yourself a favor. I've been using it for about two weeks now. Head over to Aura.com slash triple F shooting. Get 14 days of it for free. Get on there and just kind of, it's like Googling yourself. Wow, I am not very important. Check out their site, see how your information has been used, what different data brokers have a hold of it, start opting out of it, 
get out of the different spam calls, identity theft risk, all of that. So again, go check out Aura slash Triple F Shooting. Get yourself set up. I think you'll find that it's pretty useful. So again, big thank you to Aura. It's very cool to uh, you know have a sponsor for the channel. And big thank you to all you guys that are watching because without you, we wouldn't be this far. And never really thought this goofy hobby would be this far. So again, thank you to all the viewers. Thank you, Aura. Uh, hope you guys go check them out. But back to the pistol, or revolver, I guess. So what we'll do is go through just the general feature set of the gun. If you are around revolvers at all, you will have a general idea how most of this goes. But we'll start at the muzzle and work our way back to the grip. On the Colt Python, the new iteration, you have a target crown at the muzzle. What that's doing for you is supposed to be increasing accuracy. It protects that barrel. Um, and it looks pretty neat. So, you know, looking cool is 90% of the battle. But as far as accuracy goes, even though this is a three inch gun with fairly short sight radius, I can attest that I'm fairly impressed with how accurate this thing is, even with uh, me changing out the grips for a little bit smaller grip that doesn't normally lend itself well to target shooting. Still did pretty good, so um, I was fairly impressed with that. Moving on up, you have a red ramp front sight that you can change out actually in the front of the sight rather than a pin through the side so it looks very nice from the angle that you'd normally be looking at the gun and you're not really going to be looking down the barrel so you won't see that set screw there. Underneath is the iconic and everybody loves that vent rib on a three inch gun. It's kind of funny because there's only one vent because it's a short rib. So what are you going to do? Underneath that, you have a full lug barrel. Again, on a three inch gun, you have less of that. So you're getting a little less aid out of, you know, the extra weight and recoil mitigation that that brings, but it does look very nice and it helps to protect the extractor rod. Coming back to kind of the frame of the pistol, that's where most, most of this thing has been beefed up over the original. I believe there's about 30% more steel, if I remember that number correctly. But the nice thing, and I'll be rolling in kind of some clips of up close shots on this, there are no raised portions. All of the fitment where the crane comes into the frame is just immaculate. There's no raised spaces. There's no uneven portions. All the lines are very well done and you can't really feel any breaks where everything meets up. So very, very nicely put together revolver, even though we're doing a lot less hand fitting than they did back on the originals. This is far more CNC and their tolerances are very nice. Moving on back to the cylinder, everything again nice and rounded off. One thing that Colt does differently than other revolver manufacturers, at least on this particular model, is they have kind of some clearance cuts for your bolt. So basically as you're shooting the revolver, as the cylinder is rotating into the next position, the bolt drops away to start the rotation with the ratchet and has to come back into place to lock the cylinder in the correct timing. On most revolvers, if you own any at all, you probably have a turn line on there from shooting. Hopefully you're shooting your revolvers. On the Colt, because you have those clearances, less line is going to be generated. I'm sure after you know multiple hundreds of rounds through this thing, there will be some form of line, but right now we're probably sitting at about 300 rounds. I have no line to speak of. Kind of a neat feature, helps keep the gun looking pristine. Speaking of lockup, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get the camera nice and close so you can see this, but holy crap, it does not move. There is literally, it doesn't even seem to move by the thousandth of an inch when you go ahead and you know test the lockup by cocking the gun, keeping the trigger pinned, that thing is solid. I can feel no movement. I can see no movement. That's very impressive. Um, I don't have a ton of revolvers, but I have much older Colts. I have single action replicas, open tops, all that good stuff, Smith & Wessons. None of them do that. So was very impressed by that. And, you know, it probably ought to for the money. Um, before we get into the trigger on this thing, the rear sight is a point of contention. Uh, 
that's a pretty common gripe. It is fairly mobile, so you got some left to right movement there. That does not lend itself well to target accuracy. As far as you know, distances that you would want a three inch barreled revolver to function at, does just fine. I did not have any issues with accuracy yet. Uh, some people really, really complain about it. Apparently they came up with a fix, which I believe was just some Loctite. Uh, I do have a little bit of left to right wiggle on this. I have the same thing on my Smith & Wesson. Smith & Wesson costs about 600 bucks less. So you would hope that they could come up with a better sight than this. Um, Wilson Combat has an excellent sight that you can put on this thing, so I'm kind of debating that. But I think it's around 100 bucks. So, so far I'm happy with it. Don't know if I'm going to make that change. Uh, jumping straight down the trigger on this, some people complain about it being serrated. Um, I didn't have any issues that I noticed, but I also wasn't shooting, you know, 500 rounds in a go. Um, this trigger is phenomenal in double action. Because this is a three inch gun and is short defensive, we'll do a couple of like defensive drills. Um, revolvers aren't totally screwed. I obviously don't have as much capacity as other things, but we'll do a box drill to show it off a little bit. So that's two chest, two chest, head, head. So we're making a box. If you've watched this very long, you've seen it. We're just gonna try it with a revolver. And for giggles, I'll reload after it. So running out of a cute little HKS, everything is HKS and see how that goes. All right, so we'll do a box drill, reload, shoot one, cause the last I'll go live through 338s. Also, we are down to 38 special. I am out of 357 mag. I burned it all up in the last video in this one too. So everything here is gonna be much lower recoiling. So I have that going for me. Here we go. We are at five yards. Got a sticky case. Man, <laughs> I touched bullets. Let's go look, that was fun. Okay. So, not, I got a little bit of spread here. Head's good. I hope I didn't like, there's, okay. So <laughs> that's, that's how much awesome this freaking trigger is like someone will be like you shot a peanut bullet no that there's two holes um and then there's the two heads you can at least tell those are two holes so this thing so far is incredibly pointable and the double action trigger is just silly nice as far as just out of the gate you know smoothest probably around you know seven or eight pounds but just unbelievably smooth no stack up no wall feeling it just is really nice and that lends itself wonderfully to kind of a combat shooting with a double action mindset which a three inch gun is kind of meant for so this thing is just a blast to shoot in double action i'll just do the box drill at 10 and All right, not as good. So, chests are one of these, I think it's these two, or these two, I don't know. But those are acceptable. Head, I took a chunk out of that jowl. Uh, <laughs> and people don't tend to need jowls to live, so not great on my last header there. These two are acceptable, they're better up here, but they're within my ring, and then, man, that meaty mullet sure did catch a 38 <laughs> so i pushed that one high so went pretty fast probably should have gone slower that was 4.7 um you know hopefully these two did the job because i sucked on both my heads chests were okay oddly enough single action is not as nice it uh it's like a five pound single action trigger which is just odd i've only really shot smith and wesson's um at least to any number of rounds and single action on Smith & Wesson is exceedingly good. Uh, the one that I have, I'm almost certain the trigger's been worked, but it's breathe on it and it goes off 
very, very, very crisp, short, no over travel, just almost nothing. Excellent for target shooting. This ain't it. It just isn't. So I don't know if they put like all their work into making the double action good, and it, it really is, but the single action is just not as good as other revolvers. Now, is it bad? No, it's not bad. You can still shoot accurately with it so don't take me wrong so we are at the 20 yard line i'm about the max distance i can shoot in this bay and i am going to shoot these in single action now i haven't done a crap load of sight adjustment with this uh, it's out of the box and shooting good at 10 yards on six inch plates so we'll see what it's doing i'll shoot some paper for accuracy in a little bit but these are 357 reloads and we're going to test the single action trigger with my tiny barrel hit low. I gotta aim at the high end. So, when I was complaining about the single action trigger, it was like a nitpick tiny little, you know, piss ant complaint because it's still a very good trigger. Um, it's just not as breathe on it, trip it as the Smith & Wesson is, but still, once I figured out my hold, it was no problem. The action is stupid smooth. Odd mixture of excellent double, less than superb single action for a revolver that costs this much. But I'm gonna shoot this primarily in double. If you've never handled a Colt before, the cylinder release is a pull type so you do have to get used to kind of it, it has a very nice slot for you to get your thumb down in there the section that you're actually pulling against is serrated it's not sharp but it does provide some grip so you can reach up get a hold of it pull it to the rear and then punch your cylinder out for reloads and all that cool stuff i'm having a hard time with just the one shell left Click. Man, they are sticking. Get in there. <laughs> Woo, that was like nine seconds. I also, um, for some reason, just really enjoy the shape of the Extractor Star. It kind of makes a neat triangle when it's closed and home. I, it's stupid, but I like it. Um, ejection rod works smoothly as it should. I've never really noticed a revolver that had an issue with it. There's maybe one I have in our collection that's kind of chunky, but this one's very nice. Uh, again, lockup's excellent. The hammer is another thing that I really like the look of on the Python, the, just the angle of it and how it gets wider at the top, kind of flares out, very nice serrations there. And then again, all of the humps, any areas of the frame where you know the side plate is mating up to the main frame just butter smooth no issues no gaps no nothing like that i actually changed out the original grips why you may ask i think these look kind of stupid on a three inch barrel i've got a picture from the alan wake video but i already had them off for that um but these are the grips that originally come on it these look excellent on a four and a quarter they look excellent on a five and six. I just think they're a bit chonky for a three inch gun. Now, again, the two and a half inch came out with these as standard. And to me, half an inch of barrel, you know, doesn't change the overall look enough to make that jump. So I think these look excellent. And then they also provide you with a little bit of, um, I'll kind of try to overlay here, but you can see that a portion of that grip to frame is taken up by those original wood grips, which keeps your hand somewhere down here, rather than, I'll just use my index even though I wouldn't, keeps your hand down here rather than higher on the gun. Being higher on the gun alleviates recoil. I just like everything about that smaller grip better. These are 357s. It does not fill the hand out as much, but it also relieves your ability to get speed loaders in here. 
these kind of get in the way. You can do it. You can absolutely do it, but those kind of get in the way. So with a speed loader on those original grips, you're kind of bumping off the grip here. And to get perfectly lined up on this guy, there is no bumping anything like that. You have a straight shot in, makes things a little smoother. Maybe not smoother for me. I'm not that good at it, but you get the idea. I need all the help I can get. Um, should be noted, if you're going with like the HKS speed loaders, they are not the same as the Smith & Wesson speed loaders. There's a bunch of different models, but these are their own thing. And I believe their model number is literally PYA or something like that. So they only work with a Python and that's it. That's the whole gun. We made it all the way to the butt of the grip. Looks really nice. Shoots excellent. So we will get into some of the shooting. Um, real quick, I guess, before we do kind of size comparison. Obviously, this is a 5-inch barreled model. You've seen this on the channel if you've watched the videos. But this is a 686 plus. So this gets seven rounds. Obviously, a Python's only six. I don't think they're probably ever going to make a seven-shot Python. But size-wise, that's about where you land is 686 L-frame area. So this is chunkier than a K-frame. There's quite a bit more frame to it. Um, you know, somewhere in this ballpark. But again, Smith & Wesson's a very nice revolver. The Colt Python's just a different animal. They both shoot the same ammo, do the same thing, but it's just a very different feel between a Smith and this. They're both excellent. Wouldn't blame you for either. Anyway, shooting. If you couldn't tell when I was ranting about the trigger, this thing was an absolute blast to shoot in double action. It just works really well as like that old school defensive combat pistol. So we can kind of get into a little bit of that. Okay, so mullet head only has one round in the mullet. So we're gonna see if we can help with that. I'm gonna try to keep them in here, but same thing, very close. Don't touch me mullet man. I'm probably gonna fall in the mud. Let's hope I don't. Here we go. <laughs> so I got six rounds off in 2.7. Uh, there were already rounds here, but there's none outside of there. And then I think all three rounds in the noggin, those were the two touching from earlier. Those were the other three. I should probably be able to do that at point blank range, but you know, double action. Yay. 16. 16. God damn. So as you saw in the box drill that we did, uh, first two rounds are you know fairly close together a couple inches apart second two rounds at that speed of fire just using 38 special this is a heavy gun 38 is almost you know very very minimal recoil which is good um, those two rounds are touching they make like a little peanut in the target where they're you know almost like a figure eight and then the heads i think the second header is literally just dead nuts and the first one's just slightly off but still in that tee box um i think it was only like five yards but that's you know typical defensive range double action trigger is just superb again not to say the single action sucks we did some shooting at, at, at that range the farthest we could get was 20 yards on those six inch plates so here's that But as you can see, when I complain about the single action trigger, it's like a first world problem complaint. It's, it's not a bad trigger. It runs really well. It just, to me, they put more effort into making the double action nice rather than a single. But super great to me. That's what I want to do with this gun. All in all, with 357 Magnum, you know, full loads, not that bad. That's what we did that 15 yard accuracy just to show you on paper instead of steel. Uh, three rounds touching, two rounds a little bit low, and then of course it's not a real accuracy test if you don't throw a flyer, so I threw one up there for everybody. I definitely don't suck that bad, but very comfortable recoil with full 357. If you get into like Buffalo Bore or something like that, I imagine you're going to start, you know, putting a little bit of feel in your hand, but I don't know that anyone's buying this for that reason. So that leads into why the crap would you buy this? Uh, if you are a nerd like me, and you like video games and movies and stuff, this isn't a lot of that. Uh, am I ever going to actively carry this as a defensive pistol? Probably not. Would I trust it? Yup. 
it it shot awesome. I would not feel uncomfortable with six rounds of 357 Magnum. There's just generally better options. Um, I can get 13 rounds of 9mm in my shield at a much you know, handier package to carry, a lot lighter. There's not a lot of practical reasons to go this way over something like that. But if you want something that just has a whole different feel, is exceptional quality, um, maybe not quite that $1,500 price range, but people pay it. I'm one of the idiots, so I'm not helping anything. Um, I think it's generally worth it, especially after getting to shoot it when you're just looking at it in the box. It's okay, cool, but take it out and actually get the feel of it, shoot it a little bit. It's, it's pretty worth it. I say it's a win. Um, I love the fact that I can own a very iconic firearm and actually shoot the thing and not feel bad about it. That That's what this is for me. I don't want to buy an original. I want to shoot the thing. This is a shooting grade, very nice revolver. That's kind of where it fits for me. Uh, you know, if I had cool barbecue things and wanted to carry around my like barbecue gun, this would be cool. It's a cool conversation piece and stuff. But again, probably not going to carry it. As you can see in the video, this ain't really a holster for it. That holster was for a Smith & Wesson. It's made for a 4-inch. Uh, I apparently don't have a good holster for anything. This is a 5-inch. If you saw that video, you know, who cares? There's a little bit of barrel sticking out, but it hugs the gun very nicely. It's made for it. It works for this gun. Worked in the video just fine. No triggers exposed, anything like that. There's some, excuse me, there's some barrel up in there, but not, you know, it's being held at the trigger guard and the molding. It is a similar enough shape that it works out pretty well. Someday, you might do like a cool shoulder holster thing, you know. If anybody knows of any cool shoulder holster things for something like this, please send me information. I would like to get one. So far, I've been looking at uh, craft holsters, but we're around like, you know, 180 bucks. I'm probably not going to find anything cheaper than that, so I'll probably just have to suck it up one day and buy it. But all that being said, thanks for watching Triple F Shooting and me rant about this very cool revolver. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks again to Aura. We'll see you in the next video. I'm more worried about the people saying I shot them for you. <laughs> <laughs> we actually did have a comment recently in a short that was like, oh, obviously someone's shooting those for you. And that would be cool if I was that good at editing, but you guys have seen my videos. I'm not that good at editing, so um, yeah. Thanks, bud. <laughs>